The holidays are going to be upon us quicker than you can imagine, and casseroles are going to be a big deal. Baked mac and cheese is one of the most popular in my family, and probably in many of your families as well. Let's figure out how we do it. Chris cook in Nashville style and make it keto, ketovore, carnivore baked mac and cheese. Even though it may not look like it, this is going to turn into our carnivore mac and cheese. If you leave out the jalapenos that I'm gonna do for the jalapeno bacon version, it's carnivore. So we're gonna go ahead and make a batch of my pasta. I'm gonna link my original pasta video down below, show you basically how we put that together. And then we're gonna make some amazing cheese sauce and so use some shredded cheese and turn this into a fantastic baked mac and cheese. So let's go ahead and throw this all together and I'll show you how we meal prep this and make it ready ahead of your holiday holiday celebration, whatever holiday you're going for. So we're gonna go ahead and make my carnivore pasta noodles and make it into macaroni. You guys have seen this before most likely. If not, I will link the video down below of how to do this. I already shredded my cheese. You're gonna see that a little bit later in the video. I did that first because a little bit of tiny cheese in my chicken is not gonna be a big deal for the pasta. But a little bit of raw chicken in my shredded cheese, that might become a bit of an issue. Shred your cheese first if you're using your food processor like I am, and then you don't have to wash it twice. Easy way to save time in the kitchen. Let's go ahead and make my famous carnivore noodles. So there is all of our carnivore noodles cooked. We are going to let these cool down while we make our cheese sauce. We'll let the cheese sauce cool, we'll let the noodles cool, we'll chop the noodles up into macaroni sized pieces and we'll stir those two things together. So for this mac and cheese, I'm going to use a blend of mild and sharp cheddar shredded. I'm also gonna make a cheese sauce with shredded mozzarella. We're going to combine those two things together. One eight ounce block of mild cheddar, one of sharp cheddar. You can use any kind of cheese that you want. Let's go ahead and shred these up and we'll get putting this together.
we're gonna make a cheese sauce for the macaroni and cheese. I like using mozzarella in the cheese sauce and then using shredded cheddar for actual cheese that is gonna be baked into it. Optional, but this is also another way to do this. You can add in some of this cheese powder if you can find one that is clean. This is the premium cheddar cheese from Hoosier Hill Farm. Gotta check the label because even Hoosier Hill Farm has different kinds of this. And if it's not the premium cheddar cheese, they do put things like anti-caking agents and starches in this. This has cheddar cheese, which is pasteurized milk, salt, annatto, which is the orange color, which is in every orange cheese, cheese cultures and enzymes, buttermilk, whey, dry milk, whey protein, salt, butter, lactic acid, which is a preservative, and there's paprika extract. It's all for color, but there's no anti-caking agents or any kind of sugar or starch in this. So if you can find a clean one, use a couple of tablespoons in your sauce. It boosts the flavor. If not, totally okay. Just add some extra cheddar cheese. Let's go ahead and make a cheese sauce. This is a perfect time to add in some seasoning. So I'm gonna put in about a teaspoon of granulated garlic, the same of paprika, and the same of white pepper. One more thing I'm gonna add for a little boost in flavor is about a teaspoon or two of Frank's Red Hot hot sauce. You can use any hot sauce you like. You don't have to use any, it's optional, but it's really nice. It's very subtle. You're not gonna taste hot sauce. It's just a little flavor in the background, which is fantastic. I'm also gonna add in about a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. You can use any mustard that you like. You don't have to use any mustard at all but it's really, really nice in supporting that cheese flavor. All right, so this liquid is now hot. It's just under simmering. It's not quite starting to bubble. We're gonna go ahead and start adding in mozzarella cheese one handful at a time, get it really well incorporated, add the next one. This is about three cups of mozzarella. I'm gonna use about two of them in the sauce, and then the third cup will be mixed in with the noodles afterwards. So the cheese sauce has gotten a lot thicker. Last thing I'm gonna do is add in about three tablespoons of butter. All right, there is our cheese sauce done. Taste it, make sure it doesn't need any salt. If it does, add a little bit of salt to it, and then we're gonna go ahead and turn this off. We're gonna let it sit here and start cooling down in temperature so that after the noodles are chopped, we can go ahead and pour this over top and toss them together, and then we can take the rest of our ingredients and put the mac and cheese together. So the noodles are cool. We have them here in a bowl. Now you could lay these out on a cutting board and use a knife and cut them into pieces, whatever size you want. You could even leave them like this if you wanted long noodles. I think something a lot easier is gonna be using my meat chopper in the bowl. I'm gonna link one of these down below for you guys. So use something like this, use a knife on a cutting board, whatever it is you gotta do, get these cut up into macaroni sized pieces and then I'll show you where we go next. Right, so here are our macaroni noodles all cut up into pieces. If you run your fingers through them, you can find any of the long ones that maybe you missed and just break those into a few pieces like that. And these are gonna be ready to toss with the rest of the ingredients to prep our mac and cheese. We're gonna go ahead and pour our cheese sauce over top of our noodles. If it's too thin, you can cook a little bit of the water out of it. Be careful not to make it split. If it's too thick, use a little bit more cream to thin it out. Something like a nice cheese sauce liquidy texture like that is exactly what we need. So we're gonna pour this over the top, stir this all together, and then we'll prep the rest of the ingredients.
So from this point forward, you can basically include whatever you like to include in your mac and cheese. I'm doing a little bit more ketovore version with jalapenos, but you can include whatever you want keto or carnivore. I'm gonna do bacon as well. So I'm gonna take some bacon strips, cut them up in pieces, fry them up crispy, stir that in along with some diced jalapeno, and then we can use the shredded cheese, put it together in a casserole dish and get it ready for the oven. All right, so this is all stirred together. This is now at room temperature, so we do not melt the shredded cheese when we go to stir it in there. So we actually get pieces of cheese that are gonna be baked and then will melt throughout the macaroni when it goes into the oven. So I'm gonna take the rest of this mozzarella and I'm gonna put that right on top. Then I'm gonna add in about two thirds of the cheddar cheese. We'll save the rest of that cheddar cheese as a topping. So now we're just gonna mix this cheese through. You can use more cheese, you can use less cheese. It is entirely up to you. It does not matter. The recipe still works the same, so customize this to your taste. If you love jalapenos, great. If you don't love jalapenos, leave them out. If you're super strict carnivore that just likes to do the dairy, leave out the seasonings if you want. You can do this however works best for you. We're just gonna mix this all together really well. All right, the mac and cheese mixture is ready. I've got my casserole dish. This is a nine by 13. You can use whatever size or shape you want that will fit your macaroni. I'm gonna use about a teaspoon of butter and just grease the inside of the casserole dish. You don't necessarily have to, but just make sure that it's gonna come clean a little bit easier when this goes in the oven. So I'm just gonna put this soft butter in here and we're going to rub it around and make sure to butter the inside of the casserole dish, especially up here on the sides where the cheese will start to cook against it. Now we're just gonna put our mac and cheese mixture into our casserole dish. Next, I'm gonna drizzle a quarter cup to a half a cup of cream. It's not real exact. That's gonna add a little extra moisture so that when this bakes, it steams and helps melt all that cheese sauce back down. Now we're just gonna put the rest of the cheddar cheese on top. Now you could put some pork rind crumbs or something similar if you wanted a crust on top. I'm not going to do that, but what I am gonna do is finish it off with a nice handful of some freshly grated Parmigiano Reggiano. Now you can go ahead and put this in the oven and bake it immediately if it is the day of whatever dinner you are making. However, you can cover this with plastic wrap or foil, stick it in your refrigerator, and you can bake it later on. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So let's wrap this up, let's throw it in the fridge, and tomorrow we'll come back and finish.
All right, y'all, it is the next day. It is time to go ahead and bake our mac and cheese. We're gonna get real down and cheesy for dinner tonight. So we're gonna put this in a 375 degree oven Fahrenheit until it is bubbly all the way through and brown on top. Let's get to baking. All right, y'all, that is the carnivore baked mac and cheese, or with the jalapenos in there, this version's ketovore, I suppose, but you can make it keto, ketovore, carnivore, whatever it is you want based on what you do or don't include. What do you think? I think it looks amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and it smells so good. It does smell <laughs> so really, good. really good in here, yeah. really good. It's also really nice because it's convenient that you can make it ahead of time, have it in the refrigerator ready to go. So as we come up to Halloween, then Thanksgiving, then Christmas, any of the holidays that you may celebrate these times of year, you can have this in the refrigerator ready to go. And when it's time to make dinner for everybody for whatever get together you have, you can just throw it in the oven for about an hour. Let's dive in and see what it tastes like. Let's do it. Do I get to go first? You get to go first. Okay, good. For starters, this looks incredibly beautiful. Oh, I also like how like the texture already with my fork is like mac and cheese where it's mm. kind of sticky and clingy. Stop. Oh man. Oh my gosh. It's very cheesy. It's very tasty. You have made a lot of really yummy, tasty, delicious thing. This is my new favorite carnivore dish, hands down. Your new noodle recipe, turned into macaroni, is the perfect texture. I know a while back you had done a carnivore macaroni and cheese using shrimp, and that was really good. Like, I, we've eaten that a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Did not think you can improve it because of the texture and the bounciness. This new pasta recipe is literally like the bomb, though. I mean, this is like, I literally think this is real pasta. The texture of this is so good. Flavor is incredible. Mm. Also, it's super cheesy gooey it totally has the actual baked mac and cheese feel it's like you can tell crispy on the top cheesy gooiness in the bottom yeah the bacon and the and the peppers the jalapenos yep stop like this is seriously so good i feel like i'm sitting at like some restaurant somewhere and i just paid like 12 dollars for a side of like their gourmet mac and cheese i mean this is seriously like my new favorite thing you've ever made and i would like to have this every week you can make the noodles any shape you guys want mm. you can use any cheeses that you want you can customize this again you can make it keto if you want to put some more veggies in there and do like kind of a keto baked mac and cheese pasta style thing you can do ketovore which is kind of what i did here by adding those jalapenos and doing something like bacon jalapeno which is always one of our favorites. You can go carnivore, and as long as you can handle the dairy, leave out the jalapenos, you can add bacon, you could add chicken. I'm sure you could probably do an amazing buffalo chicken mac and cheese with this. There's a lot of ways to customize this. It's a fantastic recipe. Well, and especially with sweater weather being here, we're both like wearing sweatshirts. It's freezing here in Nashville, mm -hmm. but it's like perfect time of year for this kind of thing. Also, I would literally challenge you to make this recipe ahead of time. Like you said, day of heat it up, bring it to whatever family, holiday, social gathering that you have and have your standard American diet friends eat it. Guarantee that if you do this right, they will not believe that that's not real macaroni. I mean, this is like incredible, babe. Yeah. Well, here you guys go. That is the carnivore baked mac and cheese done a little more ketovore style with those jalapenos today. All of my links are down below. Shout out to the Patreon and the YouTube members in the band. We love you guys. Thank you for all your support. My recipe card will be on the website. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope you go make some incredible baked mac and cheese, keto, ketovore, or carnivore style. And I hope you guys are getting ready for that wonderful time of year when casseroles like this are going to become real helpful. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. This is Chris Cook in Nashville, my beautiful wife, Ash Taylor. Guys, eat your meat, sometimes your baked mac and cheese. Love your life. We're going to see you here in the kitchen for a bunch more crazy and maybe holiday friendly recipes. I'm going to need a bigger bowl. So good. This is for me. I need more. Yeah, I need a bigger bowl though. This is like a fancy bowl. Yeah. I need like a, a bowl. Yeah. <laughs>